Hello. Hello. Um, welcome to Say You Think You're Iconic. Hello. The there. movie podcast where <sighs> I'm so tired. I'm mm. so tired mentally, physically, spiritually. I'm exhausted. Yes. He is the definition of tired. Yes. I'm so tired. But you know what? It's okay. You want to know why? Why is it okay? Because it's almost Christmas. So let's go. That's all I care about. I'm very I'm so happy. I, I bought such excellent pa- presents for everyone this year. I know it's going to be a great day. Is my anti-vax um, cousin coming? Yes, but I will be wearing a mask, so it's perfectly fine. Yeah. I'm going to protect good. myself. I'm yeah. triple vaxxed. I'm just going to hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. We hope we, you make it. Yes. <laughs> what about you, Kelly? What about you? Um, I know Jordan's going to hate me for saying this, but I have not finished my shopping yet. Yeah, she's insane. Um, I have uh, 90% of my presents wrapped. I'm leaving that 10% because of the ones that I have not bought yet. Mm. (laughs) Or I have not made. I do have to make one of the presents. See, I've been done. But then there's a couple of people coming that I did not know were coming. So I bought them gifts that you still have to wrap uh they haven't come yet i think they're coming tomorrow and then i will wrap them and then i Mm. will be done Mm. at this point if anyone else is coming they're not getting anything i'm so sorry (laughs) i'm done shopping yeah it's a little too late yeah it's too late like we love you but hmm. so yeah i still have a little bit more stuff to do um i will say i'm gonna say this now because I think it's really funny, but I got my parents um, a gift. It's a it's a uh, um, one of those uh, cleaning robots, the vacuum. A Roomba. Yeah, it's, it's not a Roomba. It's a different brand, but it's yeah, it's basically Roomba. An Oomba, um, got it. An Oomba, yes. <laughs> but she couldn't I afford made... the R, y'all. She... <laughs> the R was a little too expensive. It was expensive. Too, the vowels were less expensive. It was too expensive. I could I could afford uh, two consonants. Yeah. And that was it. So I got the umba instead. It's okay. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> um, and I uh, made the gift out from our my dog and uh, the family dog because they shed a lot and my mom always complains about the hair. So I made the gift out from them and I think it's really funny and I can't wait for them to open it. Oh my gosh, I got this amazing thing. Mm-hmm. I'll send you a link. It's great. It's like okay. this de-shedder thingy that you attach to your vacuum cleaner. <gasps> and so like while you're de-shedding your dog, it just immediately goes into the vacuum cleaner. I love it. I'll send you a link. Yes, that's beautiful. Yes. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Because like I have a um, a pit lab mix. So she sheds a little bit. She's, she has the pit hair, not the Labrador hair, thank God. Um, but our other our other young man, who is not so young anymore, he is a terrier and he just sheds all year uh, round. I have German Shepherds. There's constantly hair. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah, so you're if you're saying it's good, I, I 100% believe you. Sending it to you right now. Thank you. Because I'm tired of brushing my dog for like, 15 plus minutes and it's still like there's still hair Elmeo, you sent me a uh, it sent me to a sign in <laughs> for amazon son of a <laughs> you can just screenshot it too just send me that if it won't let you send a, a link no i'm determined okay well we're, we're gonna make this work what the fuck is what, happening outside what of my happening house? at your house oh here I... we go I swear my neighbor hates me. If you were listening to the last episode, you probably heard a leaf blower because 
my neighbor was leaf blowing for like three hours yeah like who leaf blows for that long like yeah, I had it was a, really loud I had an interview and like an hour and a half before we started recording and he was leaf blowing he recorded throughout pretty much the entire recording which mm-hmm. was almost two hours yeah this man hates me yeah it's very much done on purpose yeah and now he's like slamming car doors for some reason what is happening maybe he has anchor issues can he just move already he's been moving for like a year (laughs) oh my gosh okay kelly i'm ready for you to tell me about this movie i'm so excited to tell you about this movie okay i have thoughts um there (laughs) There was a process to this, actually, because um, I went to my auntie's house like a week ago and she had some type of holiday movie on. I don't know what, but um, Chad Michael Murray was in it. He was good. The other main girl, questionable. (laughs) But I was like, I haven't watched a Chad Michael Murray movie in a very long time. He has other movies. Yeah. He has other popular movies. He was in Freaky Friday. Oh, was he? I haven't seen that movie. Yes. In, I haven't seen that movie in years. So I know I, me neither. I don't know. It re- it reminded me um, when I was looking at movie facts. I was like, oh, heck yeah, he was in Freaky Friday, wasn't he? Okay. But anyway, he was, okay. wasn't he? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we start this movie um, with a scenic snowy mountain range that leads us to a castle where a voiceover starts to tell us the traditional story of Cinderella. Uh, JK though, it's actually the San Fernando Valley. (laughs) Mm, Nothing more magical. (laughs) Nothing more magical than the San Fernando Valley, uh, where we see a a father and daughter looking at a snow globe together. The voiceover tells us that um, they had the best relationship with one another. Um, The father owned a diner and that she loved to be there. Mm -hmm. And also, can I point out, Yes. Miss Natalie Cole, she is paid very well. She is not missing any meals. She, this will be, that song is in so many movies. Yeah. She, she will never have to work another day in her life. Mm -mm. This is her, um, all I want for Christmas is you. Yes. And honestly, I'm proud of her for that. Yeah. Good for her. I know like my opinion matters none to her, but like when someone creates a song, that is you so much yeah I have to applaud them yeah I I have to because they did it they yeah they reached the pinnacle of success yeah because this was in um this was at the end of Parent Trap at the end of Parent Trap in this this movie in this movie I think it's in The Wedding Planner it is uh and that's just three movies that's just three we can think of off the top of our head yeah, this is not counting any other movies, any other like radios or and like any like wedding that has used this song. I mean, geez, or TV show at this point. Yeah, she's well paid. Yeah, good for her. So the girl had everything she wanted, but her dad thought she needed something more. So he married a woman named Fiona and she gained a stepmom and sisters named Brianna and Gabriella. A stepmom she did not like, which brings me yes. to another conversation that needs to be had. Mm-hmm. Um, stop marrying people that your children don't like. Yeah, and if your parent is marrying somebody that you don't like, can you just speak up a little bit? Yeah, just say something. Yeah, because they're going to have to be your other parent. Yeah, don't, don't do the whole, I want them to be happy. Like, no, if you yeah, hate that person. you should be happy too. Yeah, like you have to live with them too. So you need to. Yeah, and they're going to like co-raise you, co-parent you. So yeah. once you're out of the house, that's a different conversation. It is. But yeah, we need yeah. to have that. Even yeah. actually, even if you're out of the house, I don't think your parents should marry Look people. Look out, yeah. Look out for your parents. Their child doesn't like. Yeah, like they're going to be part of your family. Yeah. So let's yeah, ha- ultimately yeah. it's their decision, but you should say something. Yeah. Let's, let's keep this dialogue going in house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's keep open lines of communication. Mm-hmm. Otherwise nothing will change. Yeah. We'll, we're, we'll keep getting Cinderella story every makes forever. 
my gosh, there's so many of them. There's so many. <laughs> there's so many of them. And they yeah. stopped being good after truly the second one, but I will be, I'll be generous and say the third one. <laughs> I'll be generous yeah. and say the third one. But yeah. honestly, the second one. Yeah. Because we've done an, a Cinderella uh, um, adaptation before. Yes. We don't need any more. There are other princesses. Cinderella thing is played out. It really much. is. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so we see her and her dad reading a fairy tale together. And when she asks if they are true, he tells her no. But dreams do. And his dream is that she grows up and lives a good life. And when she asks where princesses go to college, he answers with Princeton. Because there's prince in the name. <laughs> that was so dumb. I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's that's as creative as he could have gotten. <laughs> um, he also tells, tells her that fairy tales aren't just about princes and it's about following your dreams and setting up for yourself and that her fairy tale book contains something very special to her. Mm, that pisses me off. Uh, we'll talk <laughs> about it later. <laughs> but everything changes when the Northridge earthquake happens and her dad dies during it. Yeah, I looked up the 1994 Northridge earthquake. 57 people died. Oh, gosh. So that answers my first question of whether or not people died during it. Yeah. But then I have a second question. Mm -hmm. How did he die? Yeah. Did something fall on him? Yeah, because it looks like the house was intact. It looked fine. And then another question. Why did he feel the need to go running near sharp objects or whatever killed him um, right. during an earthquake and leave his child alone? Right. Like, that's mm. your flesh and blood, bro. You are her dad. You protect her. Like, I get you're worried about the other kids and mm-hmm. your wife, but like, you're going to leave a child alone to go check on an adult. She, she is an adult. Yeah, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. <laughs> she takes care of those kids. You take care of this kid. Yeah, like, you, yeah, yeah. People, you check on everybody once it's done. Yeah, people should not be running around the house. No. Um, but after that, her life changes. And the only fairy tales she now knows of are in stories only. And since her father didn't have a will, Fiona got everything and forces the girl to live in the attic. Eight years later... We see Sam, who is the little girl, which we never are told it's Sam, by the way, which I feel like they should have said that somewhere. Probably. Um, I mean, they kind of did. Kind of. Because like when she's like sleep at her computer or whatever, you hear over like you hear over the intercom, she's calling her Sam. So I guess. Yeah. Uh, Sam is asleep at her desk and is being called by the intercom to bring Fiona breakfast. Fiona is outside watching her daughters practice synchronized swimming, Mm -hmm. uh, which they suck at. They suck at it, yes. Yeah. When Sam brings her her special fish from Norwegia. Norwegia, (laughs) yes. Yes. Also, she, from what we hear, is only eating fish. She's going to get mercury poisoning. You're not supposed to eat that much fish. I've never had fish before, so... Oh, salmon is delicious. Love it. Really? Um, but I don't eat it regularly because fish has mercury in it. And I, I don't want to get that. mercury poisoning. Yeah. So the fact that she's still alive after eating nothing but salmon is kind of crazy. Yeah, she's built different. She is. Maybe it's all the plastic in her body. It's like absorbing <laughs> it. <laughs> Maybe. So the sisters start fighting and Fiona asks if Sam is going to work. And when she tries to get out of it because she says she has a test to study for, Fiona tells her not to worry about school since she already has a job. Mm. 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 Sam leaves to go to work when the sprinklers start going off. When she tries to turn them off because they are in a drought, Fiona tells her to leave them on because only poor people have brown lawns. Okay, let's talk about California drought law. Fun, yes. right um yeah. so in california i mean i've never gotten to a point where it got like that bad at least not mm-hmm. that i can remember 
but you get fined for watering yeah, your you lawn. Yeah, you do. And yeah. then I'm, and then I'm sure, I'm sure, eventually at some point they will just shut your water off if you keep doing it. Yeah, I don't remember. I just remember like a couple of years ago they were like saying stuff about like when to wash your car and like the best times to water your lawn and for how long. And I'm just like, geez, man. I. Uh, No, I'm pretty sure they will shut off your water. Yeah. And then her her lawn was like over water. Like I've never seen a lawn that green in my entire life. (laughs) Yeah, it was incredible. It was, yeah, insane. And then she's like, poor people only do it. But like everyone in your neighborhood was not watering their lawns. Yeah. And usually the neighborhood you live in has the same yeah economic standing as you do yeah where where, what's there's like a cognitive dissonance happening here yeah there is (laughs) but she's not all that right in the head so it's fine Mm -mm. it's fine so we are then at the diner and we see that it has been renovated from Hal's diner to Fiona's we see Rhonda Eleanor and Bobby working the diner and when Rhonda sees Sam still working and tells her to get going to school and her saying if she doesn't finish her shift Fiona will be mad Rhonda gets upset and sends Sam on her way anyway I'm sorry but like this whole Fiona's gonna get mad thing is so funny to me because like Fiona's not even here <laughs> but what you, uh, just go like no one care plus it's the middle of the day no one is coming just go it's hi. insane hi yeah. also who's gonna snitch right we are it's like established from the get-go that no one likes the others her. don't like Fiona at all yeah no one's gonna snitch on you sweetie just go yeah just go so Sam shows up to her best friend Carter's house to pick him up and after seeing his outfit sends him back in to change yeah I don't know what he was going for but it was not working Oh my gosh, when I saw Carter, the first thing I wrote down in my notes was, it's the guy from Easy A. Yeah. yeah the, gay, the gay guy whose story mimicked Tom Sawyer. Like, I was yes. like, that's him. Yes, it's Oh my him. gosh. He's come back. Um, we then see North Valley High, and Sam goes to park, but the spot is taken by Shelby, the popular cheerleader, who Carter is obsessed with. Mm-hmm. It's kind of concerning. It's very scary. Mm -hmm. Another parking spot then opens up, but it is taken again before she can by Austin, the quarterback and popular dude. Um, And when the group notice Sam, they make fun of her for being the diner girl. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to talk about the school. Mm -hmm. Just real quick. How Mm -hmm. come in every teen movie Mm -hmm. that takes place in California, they pick schools that look like missions? always yeah. most schools in california don't look like that yeah they don't like they don't look that nice no they don't look like missions you know what they look like they look like how can i describe it you know how when they're doing construction and on the construction site they'll have like those trailer thingies yes that's what yeah. most california schools look like yeah then, a lot of the classrooms are like outside esque yeah outside. they're mobile home esque they're outside like yeah. there's no inside element of the school unless you're mm-hmm. like in like the main building mm-hmm. then that's and then inside it, and then that is just made up of brick yeah it's just a brick box it's brick um if you're lucky you'll have some windows but they'll be bulletproof and then <laughs> <laughs> And then you'll be eating outside. Yes, you will yep. be. You will be eating outside. Yeah. Lunch rooms are for if it's raining. And that's raining. if you're and that's if and you're, that's it. That's if you're lucky and your school has a lunch room. Yeah. Or an auditorium or something not. to eat in. We did not. We did not. So <laughs> Yeah. So that was so, fun. <laughs> so let's let's start being real about California. Yes. California high schools are not as nice as movies. Yeah, but, they were like it. They were like it does not snow be. here, so you're going to be outside most of the day. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, 
We then see Shel uh, Shelby, Madison, and Caitlin make their way through the halls, and Gabriella and Brianna try to say hi to them, but are brushed off. Sam and Carter then run into Terry and see that he's living out his perfect nerd life. When Sam get Sam gets a text from what Carter calls her secret admirer. Sam and her mystery man uh, text about Professor Rothman and she wonders if who she's talking to is near her. And when he asks when they can meet, she texts back soon before going to class. And we get the LOL meme. Yes, we the, do. Laugh out loud. Laugh out loud. The beginning of texting days. I did not realize that was from this movie. Yeah. And when it happened, I screamed. I was like, <laughs> whoa. Laugh out loud. This, it was crazy. I was not expecting it to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we then see someone receive the text nearby and we see that it's Austin. We then see Sam and Austin texting and IMing over a couple of days, talking about who each other could be Austin wanting to be a writer with his dad not knowing and ends with a sweet poem by Tennyson and Austin asking if she would meet him at the Halloween homecoming and she doesn't reply. The next day, Sam is at the baseball field with Carter and they talk about how she should meet him. She's unsure, but Carter says she should do it after meeting him in a Princeton chat room and him going to the same school. It could be a good thing for her. What he a, offers to be her escort and she agrees. I might be a little a little young, mm -hmm. but like what is a Princeton chat room? Like, is that full of people who go to Princeton or just full of people who want to go to Princeton? Um it's people who um are going to go to Princeton. But they don't know they're going whatever yeah but like it's people who are like oh i'm excited to maybe go to princeton you're interested in princeton too it's kind of like omegle but <laughs> omegle. your same interest is <laughs> your same interest is princeton <laughs> <laughs> people that's still like use... the closest i can get <laughs> that was a throwback kelly omegle yeah sorry did i just age myself <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I might have. Uh, but yeah, if y'all don't know what a meagle is, don't look it up. It's please, fine. please don't. It's full it's of racist now. Don't go on that thing. <laughs> um, also, let's talk about Austin Ames. So mm -hmm. his father, I don't know if it really happened yet, but I'm just going to talk mm -hmm. about it now. His foster, his father has his whole life planned out for him. Oh, He's yeah. going to go to USC. He's going to play football. And then after high, high school, after college, he's going to come run the family business. Why does he have to go to college? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, so you're, you're going to have him run the family. But why does he have to go to college? You're wasting right. money. Just let yeah. him go to the, just let him learn how to run the business. <laughs> um. Sam then gets a call from Fiona to do errands for her and, and says that she puts up and tells Carter basically that she puts up with it because Fiona is going to pay for her college before hitting a homer out of the, um, the baseball field. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, Fiona is going to pay for her college, why does Sam work at the diner and what, where does that money go? I think the whole thing is Fiona is pretending as if she is working towards her college, pretty much. Oh. So oh, she's okay. so she's working so that Fiona will theoretically pay for college, even though okay. the, even though Fiona has no intentions on paying for Sam's no, college. Absolutely not. Uh, the ball flies onto the football field right next to where Austin is practicing and is impressed with the girl who hit it. Ryan then asks what he and Shelby are going to be for the homecoming dance. And Austin tells him he doesn't know if he's going to go with her. And when asked, he says that he's going, who he's going with is a mystery. Austin is then at his dad's car wash business when his dad approaches him about all the college brochures that he has in his room. Austin is upset that he was in his room, but his dad tells him that they have been working on his future at USC. 
and I've that never, he's devo- yeah. I've never heard of a of a family member getting upset that someone had a backup plan. He's like, he's right. like, no, you can't, you can't apply to these other colleges. You're going to USC, and I'm just like, right. okay, but what if he doesn't get in? Right. What then? What then, but, sir? Um, but yeah. Austin is going to USC and then he's going to come back and run his dad's business like they planned. Mm-hmm. Sam then pulls up uh, to get the Jag cleaned and Austin goes to help her. At the same time, Brianna and Gabrielle show up with their cars super dirty to get his attention. Sam questions them about their cars, but they tell her to mind her business and go back home because Fiona needs her. At home, Fiona asks Sam to pick up the night shift at the diner, and when Sam says that she has the night off and mentions the dance, Fiona tells her to stop being selfish. (laughs) Sam then stands up for herself and says she's working really hard at school and work, and Fiona tells her that she's not pretty or smart, and that they're glad that she's glad they had that conversation, and Sam walks away. At the diner that night, Sam notices Austin and Shelby and their friends enter, along with Fiona, who shows up to take cash from the register, and tells Sam that she'll be back by midnight after picking up the girls from the ball. Yeah, how is this business running? She she just walked in, took cash out of the register to go spend money, and left without it being counted. How does she know how much money this business is making? How is she accurately um, filing her taxes? This building should be this uh, business should be shut down. You think Fiona has any hand in how this business is run? No, of course not. But like, she's making it hard for the people who do uh, Wanda. Uh, So yeah, Rhonda's good. Like Rhonda's counting the cash at the end of the day. And she's like, "Uh, something's not adding up. She's like, damn, how much does she take? Uh." Right, (laughs) right. Um, Rhonda then comments on Fiona's cash stashing habit and they exchange words before Fiona threatens to fire Rhonda, which she isn't scared of since the business would flop without her. Guys, never be, a, Sam and Rhonda, never be afraid to be fired. Never yeah. be, never be afraid to be, that just means they have to pay you unemployment. Never be afraid to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> Sam and Rhonda then make fun of Fiona when Eleanor comes to ask if Sam can cover the booth that Austin and the others are sitting at. She protests, but ends up at their table anyway. Sam gets made of at the table the whole time before getting their orders and leaving. Austin says he wants to talk with Shelby privately, but she says that it's okay to talk uh, with everyone there, that they deserve to hear what he has to say. He then says he wants to break up with her because he loves someone else and to see if they can still be friends. She interrupts him and says to think about it while they get ready for the dance, because obviously they can't break up. Sam shows up with their drinks, but they leave, and Austin tries to leave money, but she tells him to forget it. Carter then shows- Love how they came to this diner, berated the waitress, ordered drinks, and then just left. (laughs) Yeah. And honestly, Rhonda's response when she's like, this is why I fought in high school, I was like, that's valid. Good for you, (laughs) because same, I would have fought too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have took his money too. Mm, same. Yep, I would have like, thank you. Yeah, thanks for your trouble. Give me your money. Yeah. Um, Carter then shows up dressed as Zorro to take Sam to the dance, but she says that she can't go. And when he brings up her mystery man, Rhonda gets involved. Sam says that she can't go, but Rhonda tells her to go because her father would want her to, and that she deserves to do something for herself. Sam says she's ready to go, but she can't because she doesn't have an outfit to wear. They then race to the costume store and bribe the owner with free breakfast to let them in after closing, and he does. We then get a montage of her trying on costumes before Rhonda sees a mask in the jewelry case. They all go to Rhonda's house and she brings out a box for Sam. It's Rhonda's wedding dress that she was saving for her next marriage if she ever got one. And Which Sam is, agrees to wear isn't it. Isn't that bad luck? It is. Wearing the same wedding dress twice. And then I also have to bring up, what are the shifts at this restaurant? Because Rhonda and everyone else have seemingly been there all day. Mm-hmm. And then they're also working the night shit. What? Yeah. 
do these people take breaks i feel like they're the core group that like works all day and maybe their servers are different because you see some other servers in the restaurant but like but like Rhonda is there and so is another waitress who was there at the in the morning and the chef mm -hmm. yeah eleanor and bobby so what's going on there there are some labor know. violations happening here yeah because they either are that clearly or, working overtime yeah either that or they are paying a lot of money in overtime yeah which i doubt because fiona is who she is yeah <laughs> Mm. i bet fiona sees overtime she's like um no i don't pay that no yeah she's all like i don't acknowledge overtime like you get tips that's your overtime pay yikes i would quit i would quit <laughs> honestly the fact that none of them had just quit and just adopted sam yeah come on now sam could be emancipated people do it all the time yeah, she, she probably could um the dance is in full swing and the DJ announces that the teachers are going to pick the homecoming prince and princess at the end of the ball. Brianna and Gabriella show up as Siamese twins rather than cats, which I don't know how that happens. I thought they showed up as Siamese cats. Yeah, but I think they meant individually and not conjoined. Conjoined, yes. Which is Siamese and conjoined the same thing? No. No. Okay, cool. No. I think I think Brianna heard Siamese and uh, uh, twins and thought cats can join together rather than Siamese cats that match. Uh, whatever. I don't, I don't know. She has no we, brain cells. We can't compliment. Compliment, Jordan? <laughs> We can't comprehend her thought process. Yeah, there are zero thoughts in that brain, I don't think. <laughs> None at all. Yeah, I think there's one and it's really trying, but it's it's not doing well. Um, we then see Shelby, Kaylin, and Madison show up as Charlie's Angels, and we see Austin dressed as Prince Charming with Ryan and David, who are two thirds of the three musketeers, because mm -hmm. Austin was also supposed to be a musketeer. Carter and Sham. 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 She's a sham. <laughs> Sorry. For some reason, having her name next to a, a, a word that starts with S, it's just messing me up. Carter and Sam show up at 11. And also, when did this dance start, by the way, that right? it's still going on by 11? Gosh, 11? Mm. I, I bet those teachers are pissed. Yeah, I'd be mad. And it goes until way past midnight. Mm -hmm. um, they show up at 11 and she worries about getting back on time. So Carter sets an alarm to go off on her phone a quarter to midnight and begs her to take the cape off to show off the dress. Everyone turns to look and Carter wonders what people are looking at before turning and seeing Sam in her dress when a spotlight goes on her for some reason. Mm -hmm. for, for some reason. <laughs> It's main character syndrome. Yeah. Uh, she goes down the stairs as Austin watches. Carter and Sam then go to the center of the ballroom and Carter assures her that everything will be okay and goes to watch from a distance. Sam looks around for her man when someone talks to her and it's Terry dressed as Neo from the Matrix and confirms that he is nomad before doing some soulmate wild dancing he said I, a certain name i can't tell you what he did i didn't pay attention it yeah. was too cringy i couldn't yeah. watch it <laughs> he basically just like dances around her um sam gets out of dancing by telling terry that she's thirsty and he goes to get her a drink sam can't believe her luck when she hears someone call out her um email handle and she turns around to find austin she thinks it's a huge mistake and walks away, but he stops her. And when she asks if she knows who she is, he says that she's Princeton girl, the person he's been talking with and asks for her real name. Terry then comes back at that point and seeing Austin takes him as a worthy opponent before leaving. Also, has Austin ever seen the Matrix? He called him Mr. Anderson. I mean, but was he Neo? If he was Neo, then I mean fine. he had the he had the flowy cape like Neo. Neo's Mr. Mr. Anderson. Anderson. 
So I guess that's fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Uh, where am I? Oh, okay. Uh. Sam then asks about Shelby and he says that it's over between them as Shelby watches from afar. Austin says that uh, he doesn't live up to her image of him because she sees him as the football player and popular kid. And he tells her that the guy that she's been talking with is the real him and asks if she wants to go talk with him outside. Carter sees as she accepts his hand and walks outside, but not before Mrs. Wells marks him down on her clipboard. Outside in the garden, they play 10 questions instead of 20 questions. I'm a quirky girl <laughs> to get to know one another. Um, Austin confirms that they go to the same high school, uh, that she is surprised but not disappointed that he's nomad and that she did vote for him for student body president. Inside, David tries to hit on Shelby and when she says no, he doesn't back off. So Carter, dressed as Zorro, steps in between and protects her but runs away when his sword breaks and David like actually tries to hurt him. Mm -hmm. He makes a flashy exit and David runs after him. David thinks he has him cornered, but Carter uses the bar entrance to knock him back and Shelby is impressed. That was the most, that was the fakest like Pratt, like performative fall I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> First off, yeah. the angle at which they did it with the camera made it look worse and then mm -hmm. he like jumps back and fall i was like come on y'all y'all could have filmed that again <laughs> y'all could have at least said one more time we'll get one more take. another shot yeah another yeah. angle something it looked bad yeah please but yeah they just they got it and they're like but we're gonna roll with it yeah they were like we're running out of time yeah. Hillary, Hillary's very busy. So let's just let's just keep going. <laughs> um, back outside, Austin and Sam make it to a gazebo, which looks like it's set up for a wedding. Mm -hmm. And he asks her to dance and she agrees. And a random trio starts playing for them. Oh my gosh. Yes. First off, I hate I hate it the whole let's dance when there's no music trope thing I, I hate it i hate it with a burning passion it's the worst thing ever but mm -hmm. then there were randomly banned people with their instruments yeah. i was like absolutely not yeah i can only so dancing with no music was was cringe but then the random trio started playing that made it just worse yes i can only suspend my belief so much <laughs> only so yeah. much yeah this was worse than the so, uh, than the ending of twilight it yeah, was about it, to bring that up it really was yeah um so as they dance austin tries to take off her mask but she stops him they continue to dance and at the end he asks her if she believes in love at first sight and then she says that she might sam confirms that he's seen her before and tells him that he's not really looking at her like he hasn't really noticed her before. With their last questions, Austin asks if she's made the right decision to meet him and she says yes. And Sam asks him if he wants to see her again after tonight, which he also says yes. Austin then goes to take her mask off again when her phone alarm goes off and after thanking him for the night, she runs off and after a moment, he chases after her. Inside Mrs. Wells, what? So I love how she went to the stands for 45 minutes and then just left. <laughs> love that for her. Yeah, she really said, you know what? I'm going to come in way past fashionably late. Yeah. Stay 45. Stay 45 and then I minutes. It. And then I'm just going to leave. Not yeah. tell anyone who I am. Uh -uh. Not dance with any other people. Mm -mm. I'll try to make some new friends. And just go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I love my anonymity and that's it. Yeah. So inside, Mrs. Wells goes to announce the homecoming prince and princess as Sam tries to get Carter to leave Shelby, who he's making out with. Ooh, someone, someone please tell me if they can read lips. <laughs> please tell me what she said to him. Oh, yeah. If she was like whispering yeah. in his ear, please. Yeah, because what, what was it that he agreed? 
agreed to it so quickly. Yeah. Was it just making out? And did she have to whisper, let's go make out in his ear? Because that kind of sucks. <laughs> If you whisper in my ear, it better be the dirtiest fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. (laughs) I better be sweating from like what you just said to me and I have to be begging to leave now. If you whisper something in my ear, it better be something I dare not ever repeat to anyone else ever again. Yeah, it's that or let's leave early and go to get Taco Bell. Oh, yes. That's hot. That's really hot. (laughs) because <laughs> <laughs> i don't care where we are we're leaving early and yeah. we're getting taco bell <laughs> i'm like i'm like i'll drive let's go right like what are you waiting for <laughs> pick you up <laughs> God, you're not moving fast right. enough right right i'll go get the car you say goodbye okay <laughs> so at the same time mrs wells says that prince charming and cinderella are the homecoming prince and princess as sam and carter run out of the uh, ballroom She drops her phone and Austin grabs it, but finds that she's gone. Carter and Sam are in the car and excited over their respective nights. And when Carter asks how Austin took meeting the real her, she tells him that he didn't find out. Carter asks why, and Sam tells him that it's better he doesn't find out because she lives in an attic and drives an old car. And he's probably expecting Malibu Barbie. I love that Malibu Barbie just keeps coming up in all of these episodes. Malibu Barbie. Malibu it just keeps coming up. Barbie. <laughs> I should make a shirt <laughs> that just says Malibu Barbie on it with Debbie's <laughs> face on it. That's beautiful. It has to be in the Barbie pink too. Yeah, Barbie pink. It says with Malibu the, Malibu, Malibu Barbie, Barbie. And there's like a match Debbie. at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Um Fiona is then picking up the girls and finds that they didn't win anything and goes to drive away at the same time Carter and Sam are. Brianna and Gabriella see Sam and tell their mom, but when they look back, Sam isn't there. Carter drives away and Fiona says it's impossible since she's working at the diner and they drive away. Carter says that the twins saw her, but Fiona didn't. Sam then asks Carter to drive faster, but he says he can't because he's in his dad's car. Carter would have got his... Carter would have got his shit rocked for me for driving so yeah, slow. Yeah. Like, let let me get in trouble and see how I start <laughs> swinging my arm like a battery pack toy. Like, I, <laughs> I'm not playing those games. You made me come out. I will be. Yeah, here. first off. Yeah, just, just it's on site. On if site. I get in trouble, you're the first one I'm going to go see. Mm-hmm. Fiona and the twins are close behind and they haven't given up the fact that Sam was in the car. So Gabriella hits the gas and she gets stuck, rushing them all the way to the diner. At the diner, Bobby, Eleanor, and Wanda cause a diversion because Sam isn't there. And when Fiona goes to look for her, Sam pops up behind the grill. Fiona thinks there's something going on, but leaves as Rhonda and the others are relieved. Fiona and the girls then get in the car to leave as Carter does, and they almost crash into one another again. Carter swerves out of the way and thinks he's damaged his dad's car against the signpost and is relieved for a second before the sign falls on the car. Technically, wouldn't that not be his fault? It would be hers. For having a weak like property sign. damage. Yeah, that's yeah. not really his fault. His dad's yeah. still going to be pissed, but like it's not his fault. Yeah, true. True. The next day, Sam thinks Austin has forgotten all about her, but when they enter the school building, she finds posters trying to find her. Austin and his friends put up posters and they wonder why he's going through the trouble to find her. And he says it's because she's his dream girl, but they aren't listening. Uh, when they ask about the phone, he says it's locked. He has terrible friends. Did those, did those phones lock? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember do them not locking. Lock. Uh, yeah, and, the phones don't lock. And let, let me go back. His friends are awful. Yes. Like they don't listen to him. One of them tried to mm-hmm. hook up with his ex girlfriend. Right. <laughs> Terrible friends. I think yeah, wasn't like, one of wasn't the one who tried to hook up with his ex girlfriend. Wasn't he in Ten Things I Hate About You? Or am I? Hmm. Or did he just look like the guy from Ten Things I Hate About You? He probably looked like the guy from Ten okay. Things I Hate About You. I'll look it up later. I'll look yeah. it up now while you're talking. I'll look it up. Okay. 
Um, at the same time, Sam tells Carter that she won't tell him and just has to wait until grad. And then they won't see each other again. And then brings up uh, his time with Shelby last night. And if Carter tells Shelby, um, Austin, Sam will tell Austin, basically, is the little pack they make. At the pool, Shelby is telling the girls about Zorro, and they are clearly not interested. Mm-hmm. Sam and Carter then show up and he goes to tell Shelby. He tells her that he's Zorro and she has no idea who he is until Madison says it's the nerdy guy Carter that she cheats off of in Algebra 2 when she pulls him aside. Shelby tells Carter that she wasn't acting herself because she was sick. Oh my god. Carter says he thought, what? I just thought about something. Yeah. You said, you said Algebra 2. Love. Uh-huh love the fact that they think that seniors are still taking algebra algebra too as as seniors yeah like i love i love that movies love to do that wait is she are are they uh, uh uh seniors i would think so she's dating austin and he's a senior because i remember sam saying that she's graduating early is she that's what she says because she wants to get away from uh, Fiona so bad that she's graduating early. But I don't even think junior year I was taking. That's more of a sophomore year thing, a freshman sophomore thing. Yeah. Sophomore year thing. You should be in like geometry, trig. Um, yeah. Or you shouldn't be taking either because you didn't want to take a math class. <laughs> yeah. Senior year, I did not take a math class. Uh, Me neither. Uh uh-uh. uh. I was taking the easiest route possible. Yeah. I had to take physics, which killed Yikes. me, but like, I did it. You did it, yeah. Um, Carter says he thought they had a connection, but Shelby says that they run in different social circles, so they shouldn't see each other when he gets splashed by the twins in the pool. Ryan and David tell Austin that they have found potential Cinderella's and show him a line of girls that claim they were with him last night. And he gets freaked out and tries to leave, but his friends treat it like a 1950s dating game. Austin plays along for a minute, but has had enough and tells him to knock it off when Mrs. Wells comes to break it up. Also, she flirts with like Ryan and that's freaky. It was. It was very scary. Very, yeah. very creepy. Didn't like that. Mm-mm. Me neither. Not Didn't one bit. Like also, why did they bring girls who weren't blonde? <laughs> They always they always do this in Cinderella movies, and it pisses mm-hmm. me off to my very core. The girl will be brown haired. They'll have girls mm-hmm. with red hair, blonde hair in the thing. The girl will be white. They'll have black girls in the line. I'm like, right. what's going on? Like, you know that you're not it, and he yeah. clearly knows too. So why are you wasting both? Stop of your wasting time? your time and his. Hmm. Or the girl will be uh, bigger. And yes. I hate it when they do that. Like they'll throw in a big girl for like comedy. And I'm like, come on, y'all. Stop doing this. Right. Right. At home, Fiona is going through mail and finds a letter for Sam from Princeton and opens to it to find that it's her acceptance letter. Sam then comes home and asks if there's any mail for her and Fiona says no. Up in her room, Sam finds messages from Austin asking who she is. And when she goes to answer, Brianna barges into her room looking for the report that Sam is writing for her. Sam is then called down by Fiona, leaving Brianna in her room. She instantly starts to snoop on her computer and finds emails from Nomad 609 and finds that it's Austin Ames and that Sam is Cinderella. Gabriella, who is eavesdropping, is excited by the news. This is all Sam's fault. Why did she yeah. leave her email open? Yeah. Dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. At the car wash, Austin is looking at his acceptance letter from Princeton when his dad comes in and says he should stop worrying about his decision about USC. Like, did <laughs> you not just see the Princeton letter in your son's hand? Oh, he's, he most definitely saw it. He was just like, don't worry oh, about Oh, he's ignoring USC. it? He's ignoring oh, yeah. it. Okay. Gabriella then shows up to the car wash, practicing how she'll say that she's his Cinderella, as Brianna has shown up to do the same. 
Austin goes to help Brianna first and she confesses to being Cinderella when Gabriella shows up claiming to be her too. Austin settles it by asking what she dropped and after getting the answer wrong, leaves them and they fight. Which they fight in a car wash and I think they should have died. They should have died. Or at least been severely injured. Especially when that overhead Oh, the roller? Yeah, should have squished them like bugs. Mm -hmm. Um, At the diner, Sam is working again when Austin comes in. Sam gets Rhonda's attention and Bobby and Eleanor's and they find out that Austin is a mystery man and they encourage her. Sam asks for his order and he vents to her for a second and they talk about being their real selves by having to hide it. And when she goes to say that she, Cinderella, is interrupted by Fiona and Austin leaves. Brianna and Gabriella tell Shelby and her girls that Sam is trying to steal Austin and that she invented the whole Cinderella thing to get him. Shelby believes it and says that she's going to do something about it. Brianna then gives the radio girl an announcement from quote unquote Austin Mm -hmm. that tells Cinderella to meet him after the prep rally. Sam finds Carter and says that she talked to Austin as her, but not as Cinderella her. No, she didn't. She lied. Yeah. Uh, But she talked to him in person. (laughs) Yeah. She talked to him in person. Yeah. But she did not talk to him. If you know what we mean. Yeah. If you know. Yeah. Uh, But she says that she's going to tell him after the prep rally, which Carter is excited about. At the prep rally, Sam and Carter are there and Austin gets the news from his dad that a scouter is coming to watch him play. And if he does well, he'll basically be a shoe in at USC. The football coach then announces that the cheerleaders have a skit for the crowd and it's Shelby and her friends, Brianna and Gabriella, basically telling the story and basically telling the the story of Sam and Austin. Uh, Sam starts crying, but she won't leave and is then outed um by Shelby to the whole school and leaves when Carter tells her to she was sitting there crying it wasn't even that embarrassing it really wasn't even that embarrassing kind of she was overreacting Kelly come on you know she shouldn't have been there just crying like it wasn't that embarrassing I mean she should have left is what she should have left is what I'm saying like it was she more embarrassing that she was crying in front of everyone. Yeah. And that she stayed to because she knew what was happening. She knew what was happening. Mm-hmm. Like after the first like minute or so, she knew what was going on. Yeah, and so did so did Austin. Mhm. Sam then goes home crying uh to her room and when Fiona comes with her letter to Princeton that says she was rejected. Um It just makes her feel worse. Fiona is sympathetic and tells her that she has a job at the diner, at least for the rest of her life, and then leaves. And then then she just starts bawling. And honestly, Sam, I was like, I don't want to live with you for the rest of my life. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Sam then goes through a trunk of her things um, that have memories of her and her dad. And when she sees the storybook, she throws it away angry. The next day, Sam is mocked in the halls and Austin tries to email her later, but can't find the words. At the diner, Rhonda sees that Sam is having a hard time and asks her what she's doing with her life and assures her that she has them as her family and to believe in herself. The twins then come in and when they slam the door, the wallpaper falls off to reveal her dad saying, Fiona gives Sam- If you're not first, you're last. I'm kidding. That's not the same. (laughs) (laughs) Fiona then comes in and gives Sam orders, but she refuses and quits not just her job, but the family and says that she's moving out. And Rhonda backs her. Never quit your family. (laughs) Sam goes to leave and Rhonda tells her to wait and gives Fiona a piece of her mind before starting the process of going to fight her. She should have let her Which I would have loved to see. Yeah, would have loved to see it. I literally Mm. put in my notes, no, let her whoop her ass. Like, let her do it. Right, right. Let her do it. Like, this is, she earned it. And also, I have another thing to bring up. Did Sam Uh, only apply to Princeton? It seems like it. That's the only school she applied (laughs) to. 
if they don't stop doing that in movies, people don't just apply to one college. Right. Like she, if she's as smart as she claims to be, she should have applied it to Harvard. Yale. Uh, Yale. Brown. Brown. U Penn, even. Yeah. Like, right. come on. Anything. Like, girl, you don't just do one. Have backups, please. Have backups, please. Um, uh, Sam stops Rhonda from fighting her, and Bobby and Eleanor quit, and everyone else walks out of the diner, including some of the people eating. <laughs> yeah, I love how the guy that walked out with his plate of fries and he's all like, "Just bill me, send, send me, me a, a bill." bill. <laughs> Which same, I would have wanted to keep eating my fries. Right, like I, I've already started eating, but right. I, I, I stand with workers. So right, right. <laughs> I would have dropped the twenty on the desk and been like, "Here you go." Yeah, right. I'm going to walk out. At Rhonda's house, Sam is moving in and asks if it's okay that let's she's staying about, with her. Let's talk about Rhonda's house. How, mm-hmm. how, how yeah. is she affording this house? <laughs> her yeah. house is the same size as Sam's house, seemingly. Seemingly. And Sam's family is rich somehow. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Rhonda is... A single person. A single person who works in a diner. Yeah. How? Yeah. That must have been a very good divorce. <laughs> right. Right. Um, Sam says that she finally feels at home with Rhonda. Uh, Sam then gets an idea and tells Rhonda not to wait up because she has something to do. Uh, before this, the game, the, uh, the, uh, football game sam goes through the boys locker room looking for austin when she finds him austin tries to talk but sam speaks first and says that he is a coward and that she understands what it feels like but she's willing to stand up for herself and she knows that person from the emails is in him but she's not waiting for him anymore and walks out carter meets uh, sam in the hall after Rhonda told him where she was and says that he's proud of her standing up for herself and to cheer them up they should go do something Carter was planning on staying for the football game and she agrees saying that she's strong enough to handle it. Why? I don't know. Carter doesn't seem like the type that likes football. Right. Don't know why he wanted to stay at this game. Maybe it was just one of those like one off. I should go to at least one football game in my life. I'm going to tell you this now. I don't think I went to a single one of my high schools. No, that's not true. (laughs) But (laughs) um. See, even you went. Actually, did I? Did yes, you? I did. Yes, I did. I think I okay. went. Okay. I didn't go to any of our soccer games, though. <gasps> did you go to any volleyball games? Of course I did. Oh. First off, I played volleyball, Kelly. True, 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 true. But you watched some of our volleyball games? Oh. Yeah, usually, usually <laughs> when my carpool was running late. <laughs> Okay. Um, Shelby on the field with her girls. Shelby is on the field with her girls and tell them that her and Austin are almost back together when Carter and Sam sit down in the stands. Which, what does that mean? Yeah, I don't even know, dude. It's not We're official. We're almost it's back not together. A, it's not official yet, but like it's happening. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what does that mean? It's basically one of those uh, um, we're dating, but he doesn't know it yet. Yeah. Yikes. Um, Austin is warming up on the field and sees Sam when his dad comes up to him and tells him to do well because of the scout. Yeah, because apparently takes... his dad is his coach. That was not no. mentioned throughout the entirety of the movie. Wait, he's he might not? Have been, he's not the coach. Why was he on the field? He's probably like an assistant coach, maybe. Either way, it's never brought up that his father is involved in his sports career at all. Yeah. Other than him wanting him to go to USC. Because the guy who plays um, the Tooth Fairy is the uh, um, in the Santa Claus is the football coach. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what? What? <laughs> what? The guy from uh, the Santa Claus 2 who plays the, uh, um, the Tooth Fairy? Uh-huh. He's the football coach. I'm just going to have to take your word for it. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> this. Well, you see him for like a combination of 30 seconds throughout the whole movie. So I don't blame you for not seeing him. What a downgrade. <laughs> um, the game starts and we watch, have a little montage of them playing. And the game is almost over with the frogs needing one more touchdown to win with nine seconds on the clock. The frogs. <laughs> yes, the mighty frogs. When the crowd starts to cheer for Austin. Uh, Sam says she can't handle it and goes to leave. Wow, why did I put Carter? Austin on the field gets the play from the coach, but notices Sam leaving. Austin then apologizes and leaves the field. His dad tries to stop him, um, but he says that he's walking out on his dad's dream. <laughs> this is another <laughs> trope going. I hate. <laughs> this isn't my dream. It's yours. <laughs> It's High School Musical all over again. And rarely do they do it well. I think the only movie they where it's, don't. I think the only movie where it's done well is Ice Princess. Oh yeah. Because her mom is trying so hard to make her not be poor. It was like yeah. Uh, um yeah. yeah that's I get a, it. It's a re- it's a valid reason. And her mom doesn't see any use in her being a figure skater. Yeah. About, until yeah, she finds out she can it. make money from doing it and then she's like okay yeah, then she's fine um uh shelby and his dad call for him but he makes his way to sam sam asks what he's doing and he says something he should have done a long time ago and he kisses her oh and it gosh. starts to rain oh my gosh i forgot this i put it in what? my notes while what's her name shelby Mm -hmm. sure um while she's like screaming for austin i realized at that exact moment at the end of the movie so sorry to this actress that she was in dodgeball she she played the cheerleader girl in dodgeball she's typecast kelly oh my gosh oh no but she never made it into a bring it on movie nope at least not that I know of. <laughs> she, wasn't, she wasn't typecast hard enough. I mean, she's not the Jeez. greatest actress, so <laughs> maybe she wasn't up to bring it on level acting. I guess not. I guess not. Um, Austin then apologizes for waiting so long. We then get a voiceover from, voiceover from Sam that tells us that the frogs won the game and that she got her prince and a bad cold but everything fell into place anyway. Sam is packing up her room and when she goes to pick up her storybook, finds her father's will. Here we go. And that everything of her father's was really hers. Here we go. Here we go. Here's my rant. Um, Okay. Has she never looked in that book before? Like ever? Probably not. Because literally she wasn't even like going page by page. She just like opened it and it flew out. Girl, yeah. have you never opened that book before? Probably not. After her dad died, probably just packed it up. You have to be kidding me. There's I, no way she's never looked at that book before. That's the only explanation I can come up with. I will not allow it. <laughs> I don't allow it, Kelly. I mean, I mean, that's the only thing that could ever make sense. It's a mess. I hate it. we then get another voiceover and we find that the diner is back in its original design with Rhonda running it with Fiona and the twins working there Austin's dad as like community service or something yeah or restitution to like pay back all the money Mm -hmm. that they spent over the years which like they're going to be working for a long time Mm -hmm. you know how much a boob job costs (laughs) And lipo and yeah. Botox. Ugh. Um, Austin's dad finally comes around to the Princeton idea. And Carter films a commercial and gets his dream girl, which is the radio slash DJ girl and not Shelby. Thank goodness, because I was going to be so upset. Yeah. I was no. going to be so upset if he picked Shelby. Mm-mm. He deserves better. He does. Sam then gets her phone back eventually and her and Austin go to Princeton together and live for now happily 
ever after. Yeah, I love that. I love how she's I like, know. I know we'll probably break up, but I'll be happy <laughs> for right now. <laughs> what a very realistic answer. Very realistic, very mature. I love that for her. Yeah. Yeah. She's all like, it's gonna, it's working out right now. And that's mm-hmm. cool. Are you ready for some movie facts? Of course I am. There were so many, and I'm I had to make some tough decisions on which ones to pick. Girl, but. so did I last week. So the first movie fact. This movie came out in 2004. And it, it was a very big year for fairy tale uh, slash princess themed movies. The Prince, uh, the Prince and Me came out on April 2nd. Never seen a it. Cinderella. You've never seen it? Nope. I'm going to make, make you do it for the podcast. <laughs> a Cinderella story came out on July 16th. The Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement came out on August 11th. And Ella Enchanted came out December 17th. Whoa, hold up. Thank you, Queen Anne Hathaway. Hold, hold up. <laughs> Miss, Miss Anne Hathaway. Yes. Those movies came out the same year. Yes. She she was working hard. She was working overtime. Good for her. Yeah, she was. Good for her. Very because she 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 fed us in 2004. Very happy for her. Yeah. She gave us two back-to-back great movies. I can't wait for her to have her second resurgence. Can't wait. Honestly, though. Because she already had she already had her first one in like the 2010s. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for her second one. Right. Me, we're we're asking, we're pleading. We need it. My second movie fact. Uh, they had somebody else actually like going to play Austin Ames, and I'm not going to ask you to guess because I don't think you ever would. Um, but it was Rupert Grint who played Ron Weasley in Harry Potter. <laughs> But I knew exactly who you were talking about. Ew, why? (laughs) I don't know. But he had to drop out due to commitments to Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And then Chad Michael Murray was asked to play him. Harry Potter, saving lives, saving careers. (laughs) Ah, love it. Um, Hilary Duff had a dialogue coach named Troy Rowland to help her during the filming of this movie. Dialogue? He was initially hired. Huh? I'm sorry. A dialogue? You're going to have to explain more. (laughs) I don't know what a dialogue coach is. I know what a dialogue Um, coach is. I don't understand why she would need one. Well, I was about to tell you why. (laughs) He was initially hired as her acting coach when she started to work on Lizzie McGuire because Disney Channel executives thought she couldn't act. I'm very confused. I'm, I'm yeah. Kelly, yeah. I'm very confused. What? A dialect coach was her acting? I'm so confused. Yeah, so he was initially hired as her um, acting uh, coach okay. for Lizzie McGuire. Okay. And then, and then, I guess he just followed her for the filming of um, but she didn't a Cinderella use, story. She didn't use an accent in this movie. Why does she need a dialect coach? No, a dialogue. Oh, I thought you dialogue. said dialogue. I thought you said dialect. No, dialogue. Oh, okay. Which I still don't know what that is. I don't know what a dialogue that is, coach. But okay, at least it's not a yes. dialect coach because no, I was no, like, no, there no. was no accent. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. A dialogue coach. Could she not, I was going to say, could she not, like, pronounce San Fernando Valley, or? <laughs> Were they looking for a Valley Girl accent from her, or what? They didn't get it. <laughs> they didn't. I hope they weren't looking for one. Okay. We'll, um, we'll have to look at what a dialogue coach is. Okay. But okay. Okay. I saved the best, and I say that with some caution. Uh, movie fact for last. Um, remember when we talked about um, people casting uh, romantic like couples in movies and have them having like a huge age gap? Oh yeah, because Chad Michael Murray is old as shit, so I already <laughs> I already knew that. Yeah, uh, Hilary Duff was fifteen when she started filming the movie, while Chad Michael Murray was twenty-two. 
It's it's bad, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay. It's, no, but it gets worse. Oh, no. <laughs> the romantic kissing scene at the end where the characters make out in the rain of the at the football game was filmed on the third day of shooting, which for um, Hilary Duff and Chad Michael Murray was their first day shooting together. Mm. Uh, okay. The scene had to be reshot many times because the rain had to hit certain spots on Chad Michael Murray's face, which I don't understand. Yeah, because there was that one raindrop that fell that made it look like a tear. Okay. Um, and then it gets worse. Oh, no. How? The director, Mark Rosman, made the two actors make out in front of him in his trailer... Oh, so no. that they could practice kissing before filming the scene. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly, that's that's very weird. Yeah. Her parents let her do that? Uh, I don't know, man. Let, let me be a parent, which <laughs> never happening, and my <laughs> child is told they need to go into this room with this grown-ass man to make out with another grown-ass man? No. No. Absolutely yeah. not. Mm-mm. We will quit this movie. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, those are the movie facts. <laughs> wow. You really ended on a high note there, Kelly. Yes, I really did. I made sure to, to end on a high note. <laughs> Um, and that was me not even including the beef that was apparently had between Hilary Duff, uh, Lindsay Lohan, and Chad Michael Murray. Oh, we don't need to get into that. Yeah, we don't need to get into that. We don't. <laughs> um, also, mm-hmm. I looked up a dialogue coach. A dialogue yes. coach is another word for a dialect coach. So I'm confused uh, all over again. Okay. Does Hilary Duff have an accent? That she like does they not. needed to cover? Okay. She does not have an accent. Okay. I I saw her oh. in her first ever movie, Casper Meets Wendy. You should watch it. It's very cute. Okay. She did not have an accent. So So what was the point? What was the point? Anyway. Jordan, do you think this movie is iconic? Well, after what you just told me, I want to say no, but <laughs> Begrudgingly, I have to say yes. Okay. Everyone knows this movie. Yeah. It's a teen I mean, staple. It is a teen. It's a teen staple. It's a girls' sleepover number one movie. Yeah. Because I mean, we all get to the scene and we're like, waiting for you is like waiting for rain in this drought. Useless and disappointing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it's Chad Michael Murray. Everyone loved Chad Michael Murray. I have some words for him now. <laughs> but with the knowledge I now have. With the knowledge I now have, I'm going to look at him sideways. Mm. But he was 22. He was also very naive, probably. So yeah. I'll, I'll give him a little bit of slack. Yeah, we will. But still, I'm going to side eye him just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we, we, we're not keeping an eye out for Selena anymore. We're keeping an eye out for Chad Michael. Yeah. Maybe that's why he looks like walking bones now. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's just the world being like, we know what you did. It's karma coming it's back. It's karma. Him. Okay. But yeah, this movie's iconic. It's, it's a staple team movie. Yes. And we love staple team movies. We love, we, I love a good staple movie. Yeah. I love a good movie I can turn on. I don't really have to pay attention to because right. I already know it. Mm-hmm. A comfort movie. Yeah, a comfort movie. Right. So what are your recommendations for this week? I have two. My okay. first one is a song. It's called Temptation by Destiny Child. Please Ooh. get into it. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Great song. Beyonce did what she had to do on this song. <laughs> she re- she really did. She went into that studio with a mic and a mission. Yeah, she did. She was like, "I'm a thing about wanting to cheat on my man, and that's completely fine. <laughs> you're just gonna have to listen to it, right? And then and you're, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it, and then you're gonna be singing it too. Mm-hmm. Great song. Please listen to it. Great song. Um, 
Second one is Everybody Hates Chris. <laughs> I, I wow, like, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard that in a while. Love that show. Um, I want to tell the world that this show saved my life. Really? When I was working my last job, it would be on TV like all day. And so I would just have it playing in the background while I was working. And so I would watch it when I wasn't doing anything. This show and Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, kept me alive. <laughs> so, which, which, which one? This, uh, not the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Okay. Sabrina, the Teenage, like the like early two thousands, late nineties one. I love that one. Very good. So yeah, watch Everybody Hates Chris. It's actually still very funny. I was watching it and I was still crack like cracking up. Like it's a funny show. It holds up very well. So everyone watch Everybody Hates Chris. It's very funny. Uh Tanisha Arnold, I think that's her name, the person who plays the mom. Mm-hmm. She deserves an Emmy. Wow. Hilarious. Comedic timing. Comedic timing. <laughs> no one was touching her on that show dang okay so yeah that's mine what about you so my first recommendation comes from this movie it's fallen by maya because they played it when oh, austin maya. austin finds sam in the middle of the dance floor and I, I i'm just gonna say this right now i had to write re-watch that scene at least twice because i just wanted to jam to fallen i love me some maya Bro, Maya slays. Maya was making some hits. She uh, really was. And this is one of them. My love is like case Whoa. of an ex. Bruh. Fallen. Like, no. Y'all don't know. Yeah, really. If you don't, if you haven't hopped on the Maya hype train, please get on board. The oh. train is departing soon. Get on it. What's the name of that song she has with Jay Z? That's like a remix of an original song. Amazing. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna have to look it up, but mm-hmm. Maya is untouchable. She really is. And like the fact that they chose to play Fallen during that, oh, what a great music choice. Good for them. Oh, I love it when a movie or a TV show has like a good, I don't know who picks the music, sound producers, music producers. Something. I don't know. It like revolutionizes yeah. the show. Yeah. Good it music. He's so happy. Yes. Because okay. a lot of these shows nowadays, they just be throwing in random songs and I'm just right. like, what's happening here? Right. Or you're a medical show and you've used um, either uh, Chasing Cars or How to Save a Life <laughs> way too many times. There was no, 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 Kelly. At the, <laughs> be- at the beginning of Grey's Anatomy, they used to actually play music. Yeah, true. And then at some point, I don't know if they wanted to save money or they just like ran out of songs. Then it like slowly went into covers of songs. No. And then after that, it was strictly just chasing cars and how to save a life. (laughs) (laughs) What's going on here? It's not just Grey's Anatomy. It's every single medical drama. Grey's Anatomy is the only one I watch. The other ones I can't get into. I tried watching The Resident. Is that what it's called? Oh, yes. Tried yes. watching that. I think I made it a season. Mm. And then I don't want to define her by her ex-husband, but I can't remember her name. I'm so sorry. Ooh. Channing Tatum's ex-wife came on and I was like, oh, time to go. Jenna. Jenna something. Jenna. Jenna Dwayne. Yeah, Jenna Dwayne. Yeah, she's not a great actress. So I was like, if she's on this, it's not going to get any better. (laughs) Um, And then I also tried. I should try House. I feel like I would love House. Maybe I'll try House. House. I like House. I'll try House. Yeah. Yeah, House is good. Anyway, my second recommendation is Poison by Aaliyah in The Weekend. Oh, I still haven't listened to that. I need to it's listen good. to that. It's really good. I love me a Leah song. I know. Rest in peace, my, my homegirl. The box Qual- that would have been out today. Quality music that stands the Quality. test of time. 
Yes, it does. So those are my two recommendations this week. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you, yes. Don't forget to follow us on our social media. We have a Twitter and an Instagram. They're both at SYTYI Podcast. You can also listen to old episodes on YouTube if that's what you prefer. Uh, Just look up So You Think You're Iconic. Each one of the episodes will pop up. Yeah, we we got some good ones out there. Made a playlist. Mm. Um, what episode will be up when this comes up? Who knows? It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Go find out. You know what the guest the best type of prize is? A surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that movie sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, and then. Uh, you could also send us an email at sytyipodcast at gmail.com. You can request a movie. You can ask us a question. If you're like a seismologist, is that what an earthquake doctor would be Earthquake called? doctor? <laughs> Shut up, Kelly. <laughs> Scientist would be called. <laughs> Hi, yes, I'm the earthquake doctor. I'm, we need the earthquake <laughs> doctor. Stat. <laughs> no, if you're an earthquake scientist, um, <laughs> let us know how her father could have died because I'm yeah. perplexed. I don't know. But also, if you're an earthquake doctor and you're listening and you would like to validate your uh, job. Do- yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you have a doctorate, you're a doctor. If you have a PhD, True. you're a doctor. So <laughs> if there's earthquake studies or whatever, and you have a PhD in it, you're yeah. you're an earthquake doctor. You're an earthquake doctor. <laughs> and I can't wait to meet you one day. And I'm proud of you. And I am very proud of you. Yes. I could, I could hard. never. Yeah, absolutely not. So yeah, just send us an email. Let us know. <laughs> also, you can share us with your friends and your family. Subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever you listen on. Mm-hmm. Also, don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Yes, please. Um, continue to wear your mask, get vaccinated, get boosted. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. If you're sick, stay home. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Don't be that... It's okay. I just feel a little tired and have a little cough. Uh-uh. Yeah, stay home. No. Nope. Like even if you we don't even, play around anymore. If you're feeling sick and even if you like take like an at home test or something and it comes back negative, wait, wait, stay home. Wait a couple of days. Take yeah. the test again. Just in case. If just you're not in feeling case. good, period at any time. Yeah, just stay home until you feel better. Just chill. Please. I think. At least in California, if you're sick, you could still get paid. Yeah, certain jobs, yeah. So please stay home. Mm-hmm. And stay iconic. Stay iconic, y'all. Bye. Bye.